There are a lot of opportunities across the district. I am able to, as a sub, go in and select the different campuses that I'm willing to substitute. I can also select schools that are closest to my home or ones that just fit my schedule best. My name is Candace Armstrong, and I have two children that attend Wilkinson Elementary, a fourth grader and a first grader, and I've been a substitute in Conroe ISD for a total of five years. I was raised by a public school teacher. Public teaching is in my blood. I have always valued teachers and their impact on the community. I kind of get the best of both sides. I get to have an impact on children, um, but I get to choose when I work. The process for becoming a substitute teacher is actually not very difficult. I went online and filled out everything on the Conroe ISD website and was contacted relatively quickly and it was a very easy process, I felt like. From a parent's perspective, as a substitute, I have learned to appreciate the teachers so much more. And from things as little as sending a note about a transportation change as a parent, that's not a very big deal. But to a teacher who has 20 plus students in their classroom that they're trying to take care of, that can be a big deal. I would love to encourage other moms or dads to consider being a substitute teacher. It's really opened my eyes to a lot of the things that my kids get to experience within the school, and so I've really appreciated that opportunity. Further, this year has been very different for a lot of reasons, and so we are not able to, as volunteers, just come in at any point and so I've been especially grateful this year for the opportunity to be a sub because I can still be a part of the things that are happening at my kids' school.
Good evening, everyone. My name is Curtis Knoll, and I'm proud to be the superintendent of Conroe ISD. Welcome to our January 2021 live update. I appreciate you being here tonight to join us. Uh, you may have recognized that performance that we just saw. That Lean on Me was performed by our Conroe ISD students and some of our choir teachers. And we've shown that in previous live updates, but I showed it tonight for a few special reasons. One, I love it. It's, it's an outstanding performance. Every time I watch it, uh, it just brings chills to my body. But number two is that video was featured today at the Texas Association of School Administrators Conference. So it's a big conference that usually occurs uh, each year in Austin where thousands of school administrators from across the state come together and they hear many speakers. Well, today it was held virtually, but the Commissioner of Education for the state of Texas spoke to all the administrators in the state and as part of that general assembly that video was selected of all all student performances across the state to be shown and i received so many texts and emails and comments through the uh, through the platform in which the conference was occurring today just with with glowing comments about how talented our students and teachers were so i thought I should show that again. We, we need to celebrate that as a community uh, and it just makes you feel good. So uh, congratulations and thank you once again to our performers and they may not have even known that it was uh, going to be shown today. So I wanted them to know that as well. Well, happy new year to you and your family. Uh, it's been uh, since about November when we last had one of these updates and uh, we enjoy the opportunity to come to you and we take the extra step and extra effort to do these live. And there are a lot of moving parts to help us make this happen, but uh, we have Andrew and Sarah in our communications department here with us tonight, like we do every time that we do one of these live. And, and they work so hard to make sure that we can make it happen. And we, we do it live because we want this to be a conversation with you. And we also like the opportunity to have Q and A and, and give you the ability to interact live. And hopefully we can get as many questions answered uh, as possible. And we started these way back last spring when we were in a little bit of a crisis mode. Uh, you know, they started with just trying to update everyone on, on what was going on moment to moment. And it seemed like each time we visited, there was big news or, or, or a lot of questions to be answered. And uh, that's not really the case now. We, we've really settled in more. And, but we want to continue this. We, we talked about this a few months ago, how we, we don't want to just quit doing these because we're no longer in crisis mode, but we want to keep this dialogue and keep this open conversation moving into the future. And so uh, that's what we're doing. Here we are in January 2021, and we keep the dialogue open and we'll continue to do these. And I'm not sure exactly what type of pattern we'll get into. We'll, we'll try to find what fits for us. I don't know if it'll be monthly. Uh, or if we'll do it every couple of months or once every grading period, it'll really be whatever seems to fit and whatever helps you all the most and can keep you connected to your school district and know exactly what's going on. But we'll find our rhythm uh, as we keep moving forward. But we do appreciate you being here tonight. And those of you that are watching on video, thank you for finding uh, the time to come in and watch as well. We want to keep you all uh, informed of the best that we can. So our topics tonight, um, we are certainly gonna hit COVID update because it's we're still in the middle of this pandemic and it's still affecting our school day. We'll talk about it, but it's not the only thing we're going to talk about tonight. We're also going to begin to focus our attention on those seniors, this class of 2021. Uh, this is a big semester for them, and so we'll have some information about uh, big milestone events and graduation that will happen for them this year. And we'll also talk about uh, an update on our bonds. Uh, you know, back in November of 2019, uh, we as a community passed a bond referendum. And uh, although we haven't talked about it and we've had so many other things going on, that work is moving forward. And we're going to share with you tonight really some uh, maybe some brand new images that people have not seen yet of some projects that will be happening in the future. And we also have some really fun pictures of current projects that are underway. Maybe they're things that you've driven by in your community and you're thinking, what, what are they doing? Um, tonight, we'll get to share a little more information with you and show you some visuals of that. And we'll also hit the highlights of our last board meeting that occurred last week and just share with you what happened uh, when your board met. And then we'll have Q and A uh, at the end. So if you have questions, you can uh, submit those right now uh, through the Connor ISD webpage. If you go to Connor ISD webpage, there's a contact us link there. If you click that, you'll see uh, submit questions for the live update and you can put your questions in right there 
we'll do our best to answer those tonight. We've had some submitted already, and I'll, I'll try to address those at the end, and some of them I'll try to address as we talk through the topics tonight uh, as well, where I, can, where I can try to answer those. So um, we're going to jump right in. We're going to start with really good news. There's a lot, of, a lot of good news, things that are going on um, around our school district. It seems like we've, we've spent a lot of time talking in the last few months about things that aren't normal. There's a lot of things that are normal and, and the great things that happen in our schools each and every day. And we should talk about that as well. So that's where we're going to start today. Um, first of all, we are still growing as a school district. Today's enrollment was 65,117 students. We have grown by almost 400 students just since we returned back to school in January. So that's good news for you if you're just moving into Conroe ISD or maybe you've had your students at home this year, you're waiting to see at the pandemic uh, how that was gonna work out or you, you've made some other options and you're trying to debate right now is, you know, should I send my kids back to school? Is now a good time or, or is it too late to re-enroll my child in Conroe ISD? And absolutely not. Over 400 students have joined us. So it's a good time to come back into the school district if you, um, if you need to join us. So hopefully you'll do that. Of those over 65,000 students, about 82% are now in-person learning, leaving 18% in virtual education. And whatever option is working best for students, that's great. Um, just wanted to give you the update on those numbers. Now, we've had many celebrations and students succeeding all across the school district. We've had, uh, once again, a banner year of National Merit Scholars that we've recognized at the school board meeting. Um, back in the fall, we had bands that competed, our marching bands in the high schools that competed. We actually sent two of our marching bands to state band competition. They advanced all the way to state competition. Uh, those are the bands from the Woodlands and Oak Ridge High School, so we're really proud of them. Uh, this, this past few weeks, we've recognized or actually named our all-state musicians. We had uh, musicians make all state in choir, band, and orchestra, and we'll get a chance to recognize them at the school board uh, meeting next month. We've had our science fair. Science fair is a big deal every year. It looked a little different this year, but once again, we had hundreds and hundreds of children participating in science fair, and we all understand how important that STEM education is and to, to go through that project process, and we were able to complete that uh, virtually. It was really amazing. Uh, our cheerleaders have been very successful. We sent our cheer squads to UIL competition and uh, our cheer teams from Conroe and Oak Ridge and Caney Creek and the Woodlands High School all advanced to the final competition and we even had uh, teams that placed in state. Our teams from Oak Ridge and Caney Creek and the Woodlands all, all placed in state competition. Uh, and so there's so much going on and, and there's so many things that aren't normal and you may feel that in your normal life but let us never just get caught up in what we're not doing let's pay attention to what we are doing and we see our kids are being successful they're not only being successful in school but our staff members are finding ways to create safe opportunities for students to share their talents and the, their passions be it cheerleading or band or orchestra whatever it may be we're finding those ways to have those celebrations as well so thank you to everybody that's making that happen and we have much to celebrate. It's just, it's a great day to be in Conroe ISD. So let's kind of move on and talk about COVID a little bit uh, this evening. As we've talked about over and over again over the last few months, our goals are to protect the school year and to protect our community, right? We want to keep uh, everyone as safe as possible. At the same time, we want to keep our schools open. We know how important it is that our schools are open. It's important for you as a family. Uh, it's important to our community as a whole. When I talk to our medical experts, Dr. Sims, who was here um, last time we visited, is, is uh, not only the chief doctor for our um, whole county, but he's also a parent in Conroe ISD. And he talked about how important it is that we stay open as a school district. Uh, it's healthy for kids to be in school. It's good for them educationally to be in school. It's good for them mentally to be uh, in school and have those interactions. And at the same time, we know that when we're closed, um, there tends to be more activity outside of the school day. And when that happens, uh, then 
we see cases rise and that, that turns into a problem. So uh, it's good for us to be open. I had a student actually submit a, a letter today that asked, uh, you know, have we considered closing schools? Maybe it's not safe to have schools open. And uh, I would tell you that we would close schools if we felt like it was necessary, it was unsafe to be open, but so far we've been very, very well uh, at having our schools open and not spreading the virus in our schools. So uh, our goal is to keep schools open. We wanna to continue to move forward with schools open and that's what we uh, plan to do. It's gonna take us all and it, and it does take us all um, to follow protocols, do the right things both inside of our schools and outside of our schools. Now coming out of the Christmas break, we really saw numbers skyrocketing, not only in the county, but also um, within our school district. And that was worrisome. And I wasn't sure uh, you know, what the end result of that would be, but we've actually seen a plateau now. So I'm very hopeful that we've seen the worst. We're gonna start to see a decrease. Uh, we've seen it ever so slightly, uh, but we have to continue to do all the right things to help make that happen. Now, I wanna to apologize to you for when you've been inconvenienced um, because of some of our staff shortages associated with COVID. It, it's happened to us. You know, we've had both positive cases and we've had uh, employees that have been forced to quarantine. And when that happens, you know, we're short staffed. And so we don't have a lot of redundancy built into a lot of our systems um, because we don't want to be overstaffed and we don't want to have too many people uh, on the payroll. So when someone is out, there are those occasions that I know that you've tried to call an office and there's no one there to answer it, or you have to leave a message and somebody comes back to you. I apologize that that's happened. We're certainly doing the best that we can. Uh, beyond that, we've had situations like in transportation uh, where we are short bus drivers. We, two weeks ago, we had uh, days that we had 60 bus drivers absent. Uh, in a given day, and 30 of those were directly associated with COVID. So when that happens, uh, it you know creates a little bit of chaos in the moment where they have to combine routes and, and your student may get home later. So we're sorry when that happens, we know that we're doing the very best that we can uh, just to make sure that we take care of the students and adapt to each and every situation. Um, transportation is a good example. While we'll do all that we can, there may be times and situations where we may ask you to say, hey, if it's possible um, for your student to be a car rider for a week or two while we can get our numbers back under control, that helps everyone in the system because uh, some people don't have that as an option. They, they have to have the buses running and so we wanna, we wanna make those available for all that really need them. Um, We've become more and more advanced with our COVID response. So we now have internally in Conroe ISD, our own testing system for our employees. Um, that allows us to, to test our employees when they're symptomatic so that we can know quickly if they're positive or not. It allows us to make sure that we don't have sick people coming to work in our buildings. It also allows us to get well people back to work as quickly as possible. And then we continue to partner with our um, hospitals and local health agencies to work on getting vaccines available to our employees. You know, protecting our workforce is really what's um, important to keeping schools open. We wanna keep the kids safe, certainly, but I think we all understand the science behind the virus that it's not as impactful for children as it is for our adults that are in the building. So we're focused really on, on their safety and part of that is through vaccines. And so we've had an opportunity now, we have vaccinated um, for all that, that have wanted our nurses our, and our athletic trainers. And then today, uh, this evening, really as we speak, has our, been our first opportunity to get vaccinations for our employees that uh, met the criteria for 1B. So 65 or older or have one of those, the health conditions that are included in 1B. And so uh, we were able to partner to, to reserve some of the doses available for Conroe ISD staff. We filled it up very quickly. Uh, we have more people out there that want it than we had vaccines available, but that's really the, the story of the entire nation at this point. Uh, but we'll continue to do that. We're gonna keep making those efforts to um, try to take care of our employees and get them the opportunities that they need so that we can get them vaccinated, keep them safe, and, and hopefully continue to keep our schools open moving forward. One of the questions that comes in associated with that when we've talked about it before, but uh, vaccines, are they gonna be required for staff members? And no, they, they are not. Are they gonna be required for students? No, they are not. But what we really want to do is to be able to make sure that all of our employees have access that want it. Now we have not been given the opportunity to be a provider ourselves. So we, we will not be providing 
vaccines either to our employees or to students, but we try to be kind of that conduit between our employees and these uh, healthcare providers that will have vaccines to, to help get those to them quickly. So that's our COVID update. Uh, it's really, like I said, it's going pretty well. Um, we all have to remain diligent. This, it's worth fighting for, right? This being open, keeping our schools open, it's worth it. It's worth a little sacrifice. It's worth, worth making some hard decisions at times to you know, not be involved in everything that we may wanna be involved in in the moment to ensure that we have the opportunity to have other big moments that we wanna have. And speaking of those very big moments, class of 2021, Congratulations on making it to this your last semester and we want to make this a memorable last semester for you. So you, our attention now turns to you really very strongly um, as we enter this this semester. And I want to share with you tonight some information about graduation. Uh, you know, last year we were able to find a way to have graduation for our students and we're going to do that again this year. I can assure you of that. And so here uh, is our calendar of graduations. Um, you can see we start on May 20th with Oak Ridge High and you can you can see our schedule. Now what you don't see there are times because they may be flexible. Let's talk a little bit about locations and setups and everything that may be. Um, Oak Ridge High School, Conroe High, the Woodlands, the College Park and Grand Oaks are all scheduled to have their graduations at the Cynthia Woods Mitchell Pavilion, which is um, kind of our traditional place. Um, Washington High School, traditionally graduates at Conroe High in the auditorium, and Candy Creek High School traditionally graduates at Sam Houston. Uh, hopefully, we'll be able to move forward with these events and those venues. However, um, there is a realization, and it's just, it's, it's a reality of where we are, that those venues may not have the capacity available when we get to May that would allow us to have those events in their facilities. That happened last year. We, we were not able to go to those facilities. And so we have already started planning now, uh, kind of a parallel plan to our, um, our standard plan. If everything goes perfectly, we will be at the pavilion, we'll be at Sam Houston, that, that'll be the plan. But we are now planning a parallel system that would move our graduations to Wood Forest Bank Stadium, just as they were last year. Now, one of the big differences between this year and last year. Last year, for our bigger high schools, we had to divide the classes in half and have two ceremonies. We believe at this point, if everything stays the way that, that it currently is, or hopefully gets better, that we would not have to divide our big classes. So um, for those nighttime graduations, if they're at the pavilion, they'll probably start at 7.30. If they're at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, they would probably start at eight o'clock. And the reason for that is we're all out in the sun. Uh, so we, we wait a little later at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, let the sun set behind the stadium and it makes for a much better uh, ceremony. But in either situation, I think what we should all do at this point is uh, be planning on reduced capacity. It doesn't matter where we go, that there are going to be a limited number of tickets. Last year, we were able to give each graduate four tickets. That is our goal, to have at least four tickets for every graduate, so we will make that commitment to you uh, again. If we have to make adjustments in the ceremonies, so be it, we will, but we will get you at least four tickets. Um, and regardless of where the graduation ceremony occurs, we will make sure to live stream it. So for those family members that aren't able to be present uh, at the ceremony, they will be able to be present virtually and, and watch it live um, through a stream. So we're excited about graduation. We're going to continue to run both of our plans. So we, we want to make sure that we're not caught flat footed. If we need to make that change to Wood Forest, we will we'll be ready to do it. And we'll have great ceremonies just as we did last year, if that's the case. Um, and will be even better if we can have the whole class together when we do it. So that's the, that's the big news. And that's our number one focus, right? All the other events are really important, but there's no event that we do in the school district that's more important than graduation. So uh, we will remain focused on that moving forward throughout this semester. And you may ask things about like prom or senior awards night or senior breakfasts or, or different events. Really, those are all still on hold. We don't know yet. Uh, we're we're non-committal at this point on any of those events. I think right now um, we have to be realistic in, when we think about these events. Like from where we are today, to think that in a few months we may be in a situation to put seven or eight hundred uh, students in a ballroom at a hotel and pack them in on a dance floor 
is not looking real promising. I can tell you though, after talking to all of our high school principals, uh, they're all looking at different alternatives. Are there alternatives to what we would all think of as the traditional prom that maybe students would want to be a part of and still give them that moment? So the principals are all working with student leadership in your building. So seniors, I would encourage you talk to your principal, talk to your senior leaders, your class officers, your student council. Uh, they're having conversations with your principal to talk about what are those options. But what we don't want to do is have a super spreader event two weeks before graduation and all of a sudden we have a hundred seniors that have to be quarantined because of prom and don't get the chance to walk across the stage of graduation. That would be tragic So we, we can't have that happen. So uh, they're looking at a variety of different things and I would just encourage you to have those conversations, but uh, know that we we're not going to sacrifice graduation for any other event. Um, let's see. Um, let's talk about the bond update a little bit. So we, we talked at the beginning how, Back in November of 2019, there's a lot of conversation we, we uh, brought to you as voters, our bond referendum, to make a lot of improvements in our schools. And, um, you know, like the kind of vote comes and it goes and you start to think, well, are they really doing any of what they told us they were going to do? And yes, our planning and construction department has been hard at work since the day that bond passed and they've been working. And so we want to share with you uh, some photos today and some information today and let you get an update. Uh, they're really exciting and I'm going to share uh, one piece from every feeder zone. So every one of our feeder zones is being touched by this bond. And first here you're seeing the Woodlands High School. So this is a three-story addition at the Woodlands High School. Um, you can see they're very far along. It's almost a dried-in building at this point. Uh, this three-story addition will open next year and the whole the whole point of this addition was to get us out of portable buildings at the Woodlands High School. So we had many portables. You never really saw them at the Woodlands High School because they were lined up behind the school. Uh, but this is going to allow us to get all those classrooms back into the building, which is a, a much safer option. Um, certainly better. Students don't have to go outside and get rained on and be in the weather. Uh, so we're excited about this. So from the Woodlands, we'll just travel right down the road, and this is College Park High School. So you, you, you might drive past College Park High School every day and never even know there is a construction project going on in the back of the school, but that's what we're seeing here. Once again, this is a classroom addition at College Park to help us get out of portable buildings. So uh, both of these high schools had um, well over 10 portable buildings, and this is going to allow us to bring the students at College Park into the building just as they will be at the Woodlands High. So this is, um, you can see moving very well, will also open for the beginning of next school year. So that's great uh, for both of our high schools that are located in the Woodlands. Now Oak Ridge High is an interesting project uh, as part of this bond. Uh, it really is the beginning or a phase one of a, of a big redesign of Oak Ridge High School. It, it will um, after I'll show you here in a bit from Conroe High, Oak Ridge High becomes our oldest high school uh, physically. And so we, we are going to do some work there. And probably the most exciting piece, whether you have a student at Oak Ridge High School or not, if you just live in the community, uh, this could be really big news for you. Uh, what you're seeing here in red is, is a proposal that we're working on. This is not finalized and it's not for sure yet, but we feel good enough about it to show you tonight. Uh, is we want to reroute the road that currently cuts right through the middle of Oak Ridge High School and the Oak Ridge High School ninth grade campus, and we want to reroute it around the campus. That is significant in many, many ways. Number one, for campus safety, to, um, to not have cars traveling through the middle of campus is a significant safety uh, impact for our students. But also, just if you're a community member and you need to make that drive, uh, if you've ever tried to cut through there and take that road and happen to land at a class change moment, you know that you can sit there for 10 or 15 minutes and it's a very large inconvenience. So making this change um, will, will also help our community and, and be a big convenience factor. And it also opens up the site for us as we master plan Oak Ridge High School and its future uh, gives us many more options as to how to uh, help integrate the ninth grade campus with the senior campus there. So 
That's big news. It's very exciting. The Oak Ridge High School plan is a long-term plan. We will be adding uh, new career and technical education building uh, classrooms there as well. Uh, and we may see a new front entrance and a new student entrance as well over time uh, as we work through our master plan. But one of the first things you may see is that new road. Moving on into Grand Oaks, certainly a lot of growth in Grand Oaks. What you see here is York Junior High School. So uh, once again, all of the work at York is being done behind the building. So uh, if you go to York every day, you might have seen cranes there at some point from above the, the building. And if you go into the building, certainly you can see some changes that we've made inside the building to accommodate this. But this is a uh, full capacity enlargement for York Junior High to take the student capacity up to 2,000 students. So uh, adding some locker room space, fine art space, cafeteria space, as well as additional classrooms. So uh, York is a, a quickly growing campus, has many portables, and this will hopefully help us um, to, to reduce the number of portables in the building and give those students adequate facilities that they need to um, enjoy their athletics and fine arts and lunch and everything else uh, associated with being a junior high student. Now moving to Conroe, uh, into the Conroe feeder, um, we have the biggest project that was included in the November bond we talked about over and over again was Conroe High School uh, as a 1960s building. It was made up of seven buildings on campus. Um, we're, we're 120 entrance doors to the exterior because of that. Um, had safety issues and age issues. Well, this is maybe, I guess, breaking news tonight. I don't believe that we've shown this image publicly yet, but this is the new image of Conroe High. Uh, now, this will be quite a process to get here. And those of you that live in Conroe or travel down 105 or Longmire in that area, I will tell you that this is a 54 month project because uh, we are going to work to build this school, but we cannot vacate the school. Conroe High School currently has over 4,400 students in it that will still be attending this school as we are doing construction all around them. So you're gonna see um, quite often traffic changes and different things that may occur. But as you look at this building, you will notice that front door is now facing the opposite direction. So this is the new front door. And maybe, Andrew, can we slide back to that first image? There we go. Up at the top of the image is actually where the current front door is. And you can see 105 running there just to kind of help orient you um, to, to how the new building will face. So uh, it will kind of flip sides and allow us to get some traffic off of that seven lane highway that is 105. And now we can see a closer image of the front door here of Conroe High um, as our oldest high school and kind of a timeless um, look for our architecture there. And that's typically what we do with our architecture, right? We, we don't have the trendiest buildings. We don't usually have the most extravagant buildings, but we build nice buildings and we hope that, um, you know, 50 years from now when they're still in use that they still um, look great and that's part of our goal for Conroe High. So that's the new look of Conroe High that will be coming and a lot of work to be done um, in the next 54 months on that campus. And then finally our Caney Creek feeder zone. Um, a lot of work in the Caney Creek feeder is part of this bond. Uh, this is actually the first big project to come out of the November 2019 bond. This is Reuben Hope Elementary School. It will actually open next year. It's located right off of 3083, just south of Grangerland and Milam. We'll talk a little bit more about the zoning process and who will attend uh, as we talk through our board meeting recap here in a bit. Um, but you can see it's a beautiful school. It is the same basic design. We build the same school kind of over and over again. It, it helps us save money. Uh, but this is the same basic design as Suchma and Bradley, for those of you that are familiar with that school. Um, We've actually built the same idea of a school over 20 times, but now uh, they're two story. So our most recent schools are two story on the elementary side. And the biggest reason for that uh, was so that we, um, we can have less land. It's harder and harder to get land. So that's, that's our goal there. And then also in the Caney Creek feeder, uh, a project that is just underway and very exciting is a new junior high school. So this will be a new junior high in the Caney Creek feeder to replace Moorhead Junior High. And you can see that it says 
Caney Creek Junior High School there. That is not the official name. That's just a placeholder. Uh, the school board will name this building uh, in the future. That's, that's a placeholder name. But this will be a very similar design to Stockton Junior High. It will actually be a little bigger than Stockton Junior High, uh, but, but very similar in its design. And they've just begun construction, and it will open in 2023. So a lot of exciting news really from our bond election and uh, we appreciate your support in that uh, we know that our students appreciate having these facilities and your investment in them and their learning let's talk about our most recent uh, board meeting uh, we have board meetings every month uh, they're streamed live on the internet you're welcome to watch those are also archived on our youtube channel and you can go back and watch them and this month happens to be school board appreciation month so uh, we do want to pause right now and to say thank you to our wonderful school board. Um, they really make a difference in all that we do. They're very supportive um, of our teachers and students. At the same time, they're great stewards of your taxpayer dollars. Uh, we have the second lowest tax rate in the entire Houston area, and that's because of the work that the people on your screen right now do. They are focused on keeping your tax rate low, but at the same time, they expect us to provide a world-class education, and we're proud that we're able to do both of those things. It's because of the stewardship of our school board. So if you know these folks, send them a text, you know, hit, hit them up on Facebook and tell them thank you for the work that they do. School board members are not paid. It's a voluntary position. Uh, oftentimes they're, they're tasked with making really hard decisions um, and, and it's hard to make everybody happy with some of their decisions and yet they do it and they serve out of uh, really a love of students and a love of our community. So thank you to our school board. We were happy to celebrate them. Um, at the beginning of all of our board meetings, we like to have celebrations. And we really haven't been able to do that much over the last nine or 10 months because of all the restrictions. But this month, we, we really moved back into it and we got to celebrate uh, a lot of great things. One of those was our improv team at Grand Oaks High School won the state championship in improv. And we celebrated them because it was the first state championship in the history of Grand Oaks High School. And so that's a really big deal. And it's the first of many to come. I know there'll be more. Um, but how neat is it for a high school to have a state championship before they've even had a graduating class? So congratulations to all the Grizzlies out there. We also celebrated uh, some of our CTE teachers who helped make, make uh, face shields as we opened the school year. And also our robotics team, Texas Torque from College Park High School uh, in the academy who were using our 3D printers to make face shields and provided them not only to our teachers, but also sent them to doctors across the nation uh, when PPE was in such short supply. So we, we were able to celebrate and thank them. We celebrated Trudy Skinner, who is a teacher at McCullough Junior High. She was the EFTA, Education for Tomorrow Alliance, Science Fair Teacher of the Year from last year. So we have these large science fairs, and I know you've probably all been a part of it, either uh, having a junior high or high school student involved in it, or perhaps you've gone to the Elementary Science Fair Day that's occurred out at Lone Star uh, Convention Center, but it takes a lot of effort to make those events happen, and we couldn't do it without our great teachers. And so every year we celebrate one of those teachers with the, with the Don Stockton Teacher of the Year Award uh, for Science Fair, and then last year it went to Trudy Skinner, so we were able to uh, recognize her. And then we heard an update from our Conroe ISD Education Foundation. Now, the Education Foundation is not directly associated with Conroe ISD, but they exist to help support Conroe ISD. And one of the main things that they do is they invest in our staff members uh, by giving scholarships for our teachers and other employees that want to advance their education. And so uh, we heard a great update from them. They also give student scholarships as well. And we're thankful and fortunate to have such a great organization supporting our school district. So if you'd like to learn more about them, you can certainly find them uh, on the internet. And, and that's the Conroe ISD Education Foundation. Also at this last meeting, uh, the school board took on the difficult task of rezoning. We showed you um, that picture of Reuben Hope Elementary. Well, when you open a new elementary school, you have to fill it with students. And so um, the maps are up on our website. You can go see them, but the board did approve our rezoning plan. And thank you to um, all of the staff members and community members that were a part of the process, either on the committee or providing feedback uh, as we work through that rezoning. It, it has changed the boundaries of every elementary in the Caney Creek feeder and even uh, Patterson and Anderson in the Conroe feeder. So there, there are some changes there. 
uh, but we feel like we have an, a good plan that will also put us in a position uh, to be ready for the future as that area continues to grow. So uh, if you're not sure yet where your student may be next year and you live in, in any of those areas, you can go to our website and get an update on that. We also approved the school calendar at our last board meeting. Uh, so if you want to start to begin to make your plans for next school year, be it vacations, hopefully we're going to be at a point where we can have vacations next year and, and different things. You can see that calendar um, on the website. Uh, the, the board listened to the community. We had one of we had two options up on our website. Uh, one of them received, I believe, over 80 percent positive comments. That's the one the board chose uh, to move forward with. It is an early start date. Um, but it also provides the breaks that people want, the full week of Thanksgiving, um, the three weekends during the winter break. It also gets us out uh, in May of next year so we don't travel into June. So it is, does push forward. One of the questions that comes in uh, that I think that did come in is, um, you know, when we start early, does that mean that band and cheerleaders and drill team and football players lose their whole summer? And the answer to that's no. Um, those start dates are set by UIL. So they're not set according to when we start school. So we could start school on August 11th or August 23rd. It wouldn't, that wouldn't change the date that football can begin. Football is going to begin uh, according to the UIL calendar or, or band practice will begin according to the UIL calendar. So it doesn't, our start date doesn't affect that. So that, that's always a question that comes up. It's a great question um, because those kids put in a ton of time in the summer um, as well, but it, it doesn't, our starting school does not shorten their summer any more than it would already be based on their commitments to their program. So that, that's a great question that, that, that has come in. The board also approved at our last board meeting um, our spending on our safety and security projects. So every year we have safety and security updates that we do. This includes things like uh, kind of fortifying our uh, front entryways with um, bulletproof film. Uh, it includes uh, radio communications updates so that our staff can communicate via walkie-talkie, but also first responders can communicate if they're in our buildings uh, and need to use internal antennas in our buildings. Uh, it includes fire alarm updates and fencing and um, uh, new cameras in buildings. And this is work that, as we work through this bond program, will touch every single building in the district. And so um, we thank the board for approving that, and that work will be done over the summer as well. So it was a great board meeting. Once again, you can watch that online if it interests you to do that. Um, now we'll move into some questions here and I've got my iPad in front of me and um, Ms. Blakelock has been uh, helping us out to, uh, to, to update some questions. So I'm gonna try to run through them and let's see. So first, great question. We missed a day of school because of um, a weather situation. We weren't sure if it was going to be icy or not. Our forecast said it would be, so we did cancel school. We're going to make that day up. The answer is no, we, we will not. We have extra minutes. We were able to get a waiver. So the district, um, we had a holiday built in on February 12th for students and it, it was a staff makeup day, but we will be closed on February 12th. So our staff um, really has already put in the extra time um, throughout this pandemic and so they will have that day off as well but students will be off so there's no makeup day um, for that day that we missed great question um, let's see will we offer virtual learning next year so we have that option this year will we offer it next year I'm not sure uh, and the reason for that is that's really a state decision um, we are not allowed to have virtual uh, as an option on a typical year they changed that rule for us for this year because of the situation we were in. So we don't know yet if they're gonna give us that option next year or not. Now we are um, planning as if they will give us that option because we wanna be prepared. And so um, what we know about that is if we can have virtual school next year, it will not be the same as this year. Um, we, have, we have put such a burden on our teachers to try to have uh, them teaching both virtual students and face-to-face -face students and it in many cases, it's just not fair to anyone that's involved. It's just the situation that we're in. Um, so next year, if we do this, we will have, I don't know what it will be called, but the Connor ISD Virtual Academy, uh, basically, where students will no longer be enrolled in their local school. They will enroll in Connor ISD Virtual Academy, and we will have teachers associated with that campus that will only teach virtual students. And then we will have normal school for everyone else. That's, that is our plan. We actually have um, 
begun to hire people to put in that position to, to help build that program in case it is available. And if the state doesn't make that available to us, then we'll, we'll shift right back and, and that will be fine. So we'll offer it if, we, if we're given the option uh, and it's a feasible option offered to us, we will take it so, just so you know that, but we don't know for sure um, if it will be an option for us or not. Another question about virtual school just for presently is, um, so if, if we're in a, let's say a third grade and all of a sudden all the students come back face to face, but there are only three or four virtual students left, how do we adapt to that? Well, there are times when we have to shift teachers from virtual only into face to face. So it does change uh, the teacher that, that children may have. We also have done some shifting of students from schools to school if they are virtual learners. So in that example, if one school had only three or four students that were virtual students, and another school had maybe a teacher that had 10 or 12 students in a virtual classroom, but they had room to take on more, we may shift those virtual students to that teacher in another building. It helps to take the, the burden off of the teachers that are teaching face-to-face -face and provides uh, in many times a, a really good situation for those learners as well. So we, we make those adjustments. They sort of occur as they can. It's, it's not really um, possible to do that on the secondary level nearly uh, as much as it is on the elementary level because course offerings are different and grading policies and class rank when you get into high school, all those things happen. But in the elementary level, that tends to be uh, what we do as well. All right, uh, let's see here. I'm gonna try to go to some of our live questions. Uh, has a decision been made about summer school? We do plan to have summer school. We know that, that students, um, need that extra intervention so it, the exact plan has not uh, been set yet but it is something that we know that we want to have we're going to need that extra intervention so more information to come but we we will have an option for um, additional learning opportunities in the summer um, yes if graduations move to wood forest bank stadium will the date stay the same that's a great question and that's a poor job by your superintendent i should have said that earlier absolutely the plan, if they move to Wood Forest, is to keep them on the exact same dates. Once again, the time might shift from 7.30 to 8, but we will keep them on the same dates. The plan is to have the full class together, um, so we would, we would stick to the same schedule. That is our goal, is to not change the schedule on you uh, and not change the dates. So excellent question. Thank you for asking that uh, so that I can do a better job of uh, filling you in on that. Um, let's see. Uh, the district, you know, how do we handle when, when uh, employees need to be out? You may have heard that the federal, um, the federal leave actually ran out. Well, we have continued to give leave to our employees that, deal, that are personally dealing with COVID um, and not force them to use their personal days. So that's been um, really a, a, a blessing that we've been able to do that for our employees. Not every school district has done that, uh, but, but we're we're really proud that we've been able to do it. Um, it. It's an investment in our staff. Now, we're not able to do that when when employees have to be out to care for their children or or other family members. That's a, that is a personal situation and they do take personal leave. But when the employee themselves are affected, then the district does cover um, their sick leave. So that's good. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of money is put into virtual instruction uh, and we we have a lot of teachers um, put out so we're teachers that are out um, with illness so why are staff asked to to deal with both virtual and in person we're doing the best we can with the with the staff that we have and we it, it's all really understood that it's not ideal um, for anybody involved it's really hard on the teachers that that are put into those situations it's often difficult on the students that are in those situations. So as we have all year, we just are making the best that the best that we can of a really difficult situation. Um, you know, hopefully we we reach a point where our staff members aren't getting sick or aren't being quarantined uh, as often, and they're available to be on campus more and more often, and we we don't run into the situation. Our sub fill rate for our substitute teachers is still hovering down around 60%. If you'd like to be a sub, we're still hiring subs. We actually gave a pay raise to our substitute teachers to try to uh, encourage more and more to come back to work. And hopefully as our some of our retired teachers who are substitute teachers 
um, maybe have an opportunity to get the vaccine out in the community, they may feel more comfortable in coming back to our schools as well, and that will help us. So um, we're looking forward to that as well. Let's see. I think that is all at this point. Um, give it one more second here to see if we have any more live questions come in. Oh, I think we are good. So just a quick recap of our of our evening. Uh, COVID update, we're doing well. We just keep working on it, okay? We have to keep, stay diligent in, in all that you're doing, uh, your mask, your distancing, um, and, and making good decisions, not only in school, but outside of school. Don't put yourself in, in uh, tough social situations that become super spreader events. Um, our class of 2021, we are going to have graduation for you. It may be at the pavilion, in Sam Houston, it might be at Wood Forest Bank Stadium, but either way, we're gonna have memorable events. The calendar is up. We plan to stick to those dates, although times may shift a little bit, uh, and we will also stream those events for you. But we do anticipate having some type of limited capacity um, regardless of where we go. You saw our bond update pictures. Hopefully you're seeing exciting projects going on in your community. And if you don't yet, you will see them uh, coming up uh, over the next few years. Uh, we reviewed our board meeting and all the great work that our school board does and we appreciate them and their tough decisions that they make each and every day and finally great questions that have come in on our live update tonight we appreciate that thank you for being a part of this uh, once again we will uh, try to find the right balance we don't want to overburden you by coming to you too often but we also don't want you to feel like we're not communicating with you so we'll find the right balance of how often do we do these live events um, and, and bring them to you and, and we'll continue moving forward. But I wish you all a very great evening. Thanks for joining us and we will see you soon.